Hey there, this is Math Camp 321 giving you a lesson on finding limits by factoring. So in this method, we uh, have just learned that one option we have in evaluating a limit is something called direct substitution. But I addressed in that video that if when you substitute you end up getting the fraction 0 over 0, it means you have to try something else. You can't write down as your answer 0 over 0. That would be considered unacceptable. So if your substitution yields the fraction 0 over 0, you might want to try factoring in the hopes that common factors cancel out. Let me show you a couple of examples. Looking at number 1, we're asked to find the limit of this big rational function as x approaches negative 2. Let's just take a moment and substitute in negative 2 and see what happens. If I substitute negative 2 into the first term, I end up getting 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. And then the trinomial ends with minus 12. And this is going to be over negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4. So in the end, when we simplify this, we get 12 minus 12, which is 0, over 4 minus 4, which is also 0. This is indeterminate form, and it means we have to try something else. So let me just make a little sad face here to indicate that this is no good and we have to try something else. So what's suggested here is that what we try is factoring. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the limit question. And you really should write that over again. Many students get lazy though and don't write that again, but you're supposed to. Now on the top, I'm going to factor this as, um, let's see, x minus 6 and x plus 2. That's pretty basic algebra 1 type factoring. And downstairs, or the denominator, is a difference of two squares, x minus 2, x plus 2. So in factoring, what we notice is that there are factors that are common to the top and the bottom. There's an x plus 2 present in both the numerator and the denominator, and therefore they'll cancel out. Now when I plug in, now when I substitute the negative 2 in for x, I end up getting negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 8, over negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4. And negative 8 over negative 4 is just 2. So the answer to this limit, limit question in the end is just 2. But we only were able to get that by factoring. Okay, let's take a look at example 2. They're asking us to find the limit of another rational function as x approaches a half. So let's start by plugging in a half and see what happens. If I plug in a half here, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 4 times 1 fourth is just 1. So we've got 1 minus 1 on the top. And already that's not looking very good. Now downstairs, I've got 1 half squared again, which is a fourth. And a fourth times 2 is 2 fourths or 1 half. 5 times 1 half is 5 halves extend this bar a little bit here, and then minus 3. Now, upstairs we have 1 minus 1, or 0. Downstairs we have 1 half plus 5 halves, which is 6 halves, or 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So once again, we have this thing called 0 over 0, or indeterminate form, which means bad, which means try something else. And in this case, what I'm going to try is factoring. And maybe if I factor, there will be factors that cancel out and I'll be able to substitute at that point. So let's start by rewriting the limit question, taking this little part here and rewriting it, which is essential. Now the upstairs is a difference of two squares. I end up with 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Downstairs is a little bit more difficult, particularly because it's got this 2 in front of it. It makes the factoring a little bit more challenging. But uh, hopefully you know how to do that, and if you don't, you should get extra help and figure out how to do it quickly. So this is going to be 2x and an x, and this is going to be a 3, and this is going to be a 1, and this is going to be a plus, and this is going to be a minus. And let me just do a quick foil in my head to check. That's going to be 2x squared, 6x minus x is 5x minus 3. This is very good. And it's good because we factored it correctly, but guess what? There is a factor that's common to the top and the bottom. We have a 2x minus 1 here, 
and a 2x minus 1 there. So at this time when we plug in, maybe it'll work and we won't have indeterminate form 0 over 0. So 2 times a half is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Going over here, we have 1 half plus 3, which is 3 and a half or 7 halves. Now, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by a reciprocal, by its reciprocal. So 2 over 1 divided by 7 halves is like 2 over 1 times 2 over 7. So the answer to this limit question is 4 sevenths. Okay, in number 3, we're asked to find the limit of the rational function 3x minus 6 over x cubed minus 8 as x approaches 2. Let's start by using direct substitution and see if that works. So let's plug in 2 wherever we see an x. Now looking at the numerator, we end up getting 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 6. Well, that's not looking good already. Downstairs, or in the denominator, we have 2 cubed, or 8, minus 8. And that's not good either. So we end up with 0 over 0, which is not a good thing when you're using direct substitution. It means you've got to try something else. So what we're going to try is factoring wherever we can in the hopes that factors, common factors, will cancel out. So I'm going to start by rewriting the limit expression. The limit as x approaches 2. Students become lazy there, and they don't write that over again, and you really technically are supposed to. Uh, the top, I can take out a 3, and if I do that, I'm left with 3 times the quantity of x minus 2. The denominator is a difference of cubes, and when you factor a difference of cubes, you get a binomial times a trinomial, so I'll go ahead and set that up. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. I take the first answer, x, and square it. I multiply the two answers together, 2x, and I take the last answer and I square it, getting me 4. Now I've got to remember where to put the signs, the pluses and the minuses, and it's going to be the same, the opposite, and always positive. SOAP is the acronym that I teach my students. Same opposite, always positive. So in doing this factoring, you'll notice that there is a common factor, x minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and cross those out. Now when I substitute the 2 in, hopefully I won't end up with 0 over 0. So the top is just 3. There's nothing to really do there, so I'll just write 3. Now on the bottom, I've got 2 squared or 4, 2 times 2, which is 4 again, and then it trails with 4 at the end of the trinomial. So we end up getting 3 over 12, which reduces or simplifies to 1 fourth. Okay, in our last example, number 4, we're asked to find the limit of this very large rational expression as x approaches negative 3. Let's first try direct substitution and see what happens. Let's plug in negative 3 in for all occurrences of x. So let's start there. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. And negative 27 plus 27 is 0. So already this isn't looking very good. Uh, looking at the denominator, we have negative 3 cubed again. And we already know that that's negative 27. Negative 3 squared is 9. And 9 times 3 is 27. x is negative 3. And then we'll add 3 to this. So we end up getting 0 over 0, or again, this is called indeterminate form, and it means you really have to try something else. It would be unacceptable to leave an answer of 0 over 0. And in this video, what I'm trying to get you to attempt is that if you do get 0 over 0, to consider factoring in the hopes that there are factors common to the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite my limit expression. I'm going to factor the top, or the numerator, as a sum of cubes. And using our last example, we know that that's going to give us a binomial times a trinomial. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 27 is 3. Our first result squared is x squared. The product of our two results is 3x. And we end with a 9. 
And then the placement of the pluses and minuses can be found using SOAP, same, opposite, always positive. And then looking in the denominator, I think what I'm going to use to factor this is the grouping method. And what gave that away for me was the fact that there were four terms. Four terms to me means really consider using the grouping method. So I'm going to group them first two, last two. And in the first two, I can take out an x squared. If I take out an x squared, I'm left with x plus 3. In grouping the last two together, I'm left with another chunk of x plus 3. So at this stage, there's nothing completely obvious that's on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to complete that grouping, and I think I'll be pleasantly surprised. So I'm just going to do a rewrite of the top. And in the denominator, I'm going to remove x plus 3. That, I'm going to remove that chunk because it's common to both, both terms. So I'm going to remove x plus 3 by factoring it out. And when I remove it, I'm left with x squared plus 1. And now I see the common factors. The x plus 3 exists on the top and in the bottom. So I'm going to cancel those out. And at this time, I'm going to substitute in the negative 3. OK, so negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is another 9. And the trinomial concludes with a final 9. And in the denominator, we have negative 3 squared, which is 9 again, plus 1. So this gives us a fraction 27 tenths. So in summary, for this lesson, I wanted you to first try direct substitution. Because if that works, it's really the easiest way to evaluate a limit. But in every single case, we ended up with this fraction 0 over 0, or indeterminate form. And that meant we had to try something else. And specifically for this video, what I wanted you to try was factoring in the hopes that there were factors common to the top and the bottom so that they could cancel out and then the resulting direct substitution would work.